Welcome to my channel. This problem is called delete and earn. You are given an injury rate nums. You want to maximize the number of points you get by performing the following operation any number of times. Pick nums i and delete it to earn nums i points. Afterwards, you must delete every element equal to nums i minus 1 and every element equal to nums i plus 1. Return the maximum number of points you can earn by applying the above operations some number of times. So we definitely want to delete every single one of these numbers to maximize. It looks like none of these are going to be negative, uh, but we probably don't want to do anything recursive here because you can see the length of this is very, very large. Okay, so say that we're given this array here. We could, for instance, delete three and earn three points, but that's going to get rid of four and two, right? So that would be a total of three points, or we could delete four, gain four points. That would delete three, but two would remain. So then we can delete two, and that would be a total of six points. And you can see the maximum there would be six. Uh, you can do it any order. You can delete two first if you'd like. Wouldn't matter. Here, what we would do is uh, we could delete two and get rid of three, but that would get us four points, and then a total of eight right here. Or we can just delete all three, getting rid of twos and fours. That's going to get a total of nine. So the temptation here is always to think recursively, but we don't want to go down that route because if we were to do this brute force and just try to delete an element and then delete all the other elements in here, it's just going to get more and more complex. Uh, probably not something that we want to do. Rather, the secret here to this problem is to reframe it as um, some sort of dynamic programming solution. Now, one of the things you might see, and I did not come up with this, I had to look it up, but it's actually very similar to the house robber problem. If you recall with the house problem, house robber problem, what we did is kind of build up a DP array and try to decide as we move forward, do we want to, um, so say for instance, we start with here, uh, this would be a total of two points. Now at this point here, should we, in the house robber problem, should we select this or should we skip it and take whatever came before? And if we took this one, what we'd have to do is add whatever came here. So that here would be zero. So that, uh, and just maximize whatever is between these two. So here we could either take two and take whatever came previously, which is zero, or we can skip it and take whatever came here, which is two. It doesn't matter, right? It would both be two. Here, same thing. We could either take two or we can take the two that came before here and add three here. So that'd be five. And we just continue this algorithm all the way down here. We could either take five or I take three here. And so it'd be eight or four. We can take five and four or we can take eight and that would be nine. So at the end of the day, this would be the maximum, which would be nine. Uh, now, I, I realize this did work for this problem, but this is different, right? The order the index numbers aren't the ones that matter. It's the number themselves. So what we'd have to do is kind of restructure this into um, a, sorted, a sorted hash map of some sort, maybe a counter object. And what we do is go down in order and we check between, okay, say we have twos and threes. Do we want to select this three and skip the one, uh, the two that came before, or uh, do we want to just skip the number that we're on right now and take whatever came previously? But that only matters if these numbers are a difference of one, right? If there, if this was like two, four, four, uh, you know, four, and this was like 10, then the, none of this matters, right? We just select four, because of course we're gonna take it. We're not gonna get rid of anything else. So we'll just take that, All right? So hopefully that's beginning to make a little bit of sense. Let's start by um, first creating a counter object. Okay, we're gonna create a counter object. I'm gonna call it C. We'll say counter of nums. Next, in order to kind of do what we did with the house robber problem, we are going to sort our counter, our counter, but we don't need to go through each number each time, right? So what we'll do is form this keys, we'll say sorted, um, and this will be like a list of all the keys that we have, because if we take one three, we're gonna take all the threes. It doesn't make any sense to take just one of the threes and skip the others. All right, so next thing, uh, in order to iterate, I'm gonna create a length of keys here. And finally, we wanna create a DP array. Now, 
technically you don't need a DP array. You can just select the current max sum and the previous one, but I'm just gonna create a DP array because it's just a little bit easier for me. Uh, what we'll have to do is have n plus one here because we do need one extra index number for that very first first part. Is n, let's see, dp is zero, that's gonna equal zero, okay. All right, so for i in range of n, what do we want to do? Um, well, first we wanna check to see is the difference only of one. So what we'll take is we'll say the keys of, this would only matter if it's the uh, second index number onwards. So this would be if i is not equal to zero and keys of i uh, one, let's see if this equals keys of i minus one. Now if the difference is only plus one here, so these would equal one another, right? Then we would have to make a decision here. We'd say, okay, look, dp of i, this needs to be, wait, let me see here, this is actually dp of i plus one, right? Yeah, dp of i plus one. We need to get the max Either we want to take what we have now and select it with the ones two previous. So this would be dp of i minus one uh, plus, let's see, keys of i times, oops, times c of keys of i, right? Or um, just skip this one that we're on completely and take, let's see, dp of i instead. I believe that's right. So it's one of those. Or if this isn't the case, then we're just gonna add to dp of i plus one. We're just going to say, all right, well, we'll take this one for sure and say dp of i plus uh, this thing right here. Now, finally, at the very end, we can just return the very last thing on our dp array. So let me just make sure this looks correct. Oop, okay, got an eight eyes. All right, so is this working? I, I believe it is. So let's say we start with two, right? We're, well, when we, that very first one, we're always gonna take it. Now we've got to three, should we skip three or should we skip, sh should we skip three and take the one previous, which would have been two, or take this one here and skip the one previous, which would be three, right? So that'd be three. Finally, with, with six, we have to decide, do we take four and two, or do we take the one previous here, three? Obviously, we take four and two. That would totally be a total of six. And finally, let's go in and submit it. And there we go, accepted. So time complexity is gonna be, well, uh, n log n, and we do use O of n space because of this DP array, but we can get rid of that. We can have constant space by just uh, changing this to store that previous one. but. I don't know if that's really necessary because, I mean, for me, I'm just trying to understand this problem more than I'm trying to optimize right now. So, okay, I uh, hope that helps. You know, this is new for me again because I'm trying to get back in the groove. I'm a little rusty, uh, but hopefully I can get back into this. So thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.